What's up, y'all? Welcome to three, ooh, two brothers and a shot of milk. Two brothers today, but it's okay because we talking John Wick. Wick. Baba Yaga. Four. Four John Wick it's movies, four. man. Wow. Four John Wick movies. I'm going to give you guys the synopsis, and then we're going to give you our spoiler-free thoughts, and we do our deep dive. John Wick uncovers a path to defeating the high table, but before he can earn his freedom, Wick must face off against a new enemy with powerful alliances across the globe and forces that turn old friends into foes. John Wick 4. What you guys think? I delivered what it promised. Gratuitous violence and a good time. I mean... <laughs> You know, you go in expecting something, and good, bad, or indifferent, it gives you exactly what you're looking for. That's it. I'll this, say more about that once we get into the deep dive. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll say this. Here's my spoiler free. I absolutely enjoyed it. Arguably, a lot of things do not make sense thematically about this movie <laughs> like the story the story just doesn't make a lot of sense um and if you have watched the other john wicks movies then you have to watch this one and it continues to double down on itself it continues to be like that first oh yeah spoiler free i enjoyed it there you go i mean but, but boy but for the record, I enjoyed it also. Spoiler alert. I mean, I think a kill Spoiler count. Spoiler alert. Let's, I'm just going to say a kill count in one scene is like a kill count for some movie franchises. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It doubles down. Um, I, I enjoyed it. It was a bit repetitive for me. A bit. It got a little repetitive. And then it didn't get repetitive. And then it got repetitive. So I was here for This is the first John Wick film I've seen in the actual movie theaters. Really? Really? Yeah, I kind of enjoy it at home, to tell you the truth. You don't need the spectacle of a big screen for this film. Some movies you do, like um, arguably Avatar. The Mission Impossible movies, you kind of want a big screen. Well, they're shooting on lenses for it. Like, you know, they, they bring IMAX cameras. I mean, and this works on the big screen, too. But for me, it, I enjoy watching this at home. I probably would have waited to watch this at home if we weren't covering it, but it was a good time. It was, and it's always, guys, it's always good to see Keanu Reeves do his thing. He and credits this role as bringing his career back. Um, it did, and <laughs> similar to Tom Cruise, his work ethics on the screen, like you see how hard that man worked. Like it's Wait. totally clear, and he did the, slow down a little bit for this one, though. I'm not gonna lie. He's fifty. He's a, he's a little tall and gangly in some scenes. Are we gonna spoil this now? Let's, oh, spoil let's it. get into our deep right. dive. Yo, I did a recap of yeah. the other movies after I saw this because I was like, "What's happening? I need to go back." And Jack, I came to the same conclusion you had. I watched a YouTube video, the recap of part one. Yeah, that's a solid freaking movie. I went back and I watched part one today. I watched part one today, and that movie is has just it's different. The action's different, but it's just as gripping, right? Um, you're just as enthralled by the the way the gun kata, I'll call gun fu, right, is yep. utilized, and the the uh, jujitsu in the film, the grappling technique. It's all there, but it doesn't feel like I'm watching. A superhero film doesn't feel like I'm watching what the Fast and the Furious have turned into or a Marvel movie. It's right. like it's grounded in such. I'm watching a relationship film, and then I'm watching a revenge piece with incredible combat choreography, and it's just violent and it's tactical. It's so good, and that's part one. By the time we get to part four, it's like well, part two and three, kind of like. They Take it to where it to, is. Yeah, the, well, that that's the problem with films like this is they have the need to outdo themselves, and so then you got then you got moments in a movie where people are doing like this with the most eloquent tailor cut suit you've ever seen in your life, and they're just deflecting right. bullets that are being shot right here. Oh. And I'm like, well, it has the, like, it has the kev, it has 
Did you? Yeah, but real, okay, like, real what talk for a second. Police. Police wear thick mill bulletproof vests and they get busted ribs and bruises. And these lightweight jackets just be taken round after round yeah. after round. Also, a, a bulletproof vest gets shot once. You got to toss it, man. You've lost your structural integrity. I'm cool with suspending my suspension of disbelief if they responded to think Chris brought out his bulletproof vest. So I have a right. bulletproof and vest. Why? Why you would need that? Chris, Jack, don't ask questions. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> don't ask, uh, So the bulletproof vest is thick, right? And I have a stage two trauma plate in the chest. So there's no way. Oh, shit. Wow. Right. So there's no right. way you're actually, you know, it's not, you know, it's not, obviously it's a movie, but there's no way you're doing anything. So suspension of disbelief. A my, lot of disbelief. My no. only issue is play the impact of the bullets then. You have to. That's it's, what I'm saying. Like it's, it's still wearing that, you still break a rib. Right. You can still oh, yeah. break a rib from that distance. Um, oh, yeah. Now, what I will say about part one, on top of what you said, is the emotional integrity of that film. The, stakes. the fact that they killed his dog that was a gift from his dying wife because she knew he couldn't be alone. Like he actually had a reason for revenge. By part four. I don't know what he's fighting for. I know you want to end these guys because they want to end you, but I feel like it has to be. It should but be it just more kept snowballing. To the John Wick movies run, they they view like playing a video game, and by the time you get to part four, it's like you're on the last level of the game, and all of the henchmen are just wickedly overpowered and have bulletproof that, that you gotta was, use. That was part three the- too. That. That was exactly in part three. But this is like part three. On Everyone's track. bulletproof. Everyone's bulletproof in part four. Everyone's so. bulletproof. But it was kind of cool how they had to like, how that is not just, so part one, remember the scene in part one when they break into his house and he's killing all the guys and it's the first like group battle you see. But part four, when he, when he had that first group battle in the in the hotel, Ugh. everyone's trained and everyone's armored so that he has to adjust his way of fighting to get the guys under the chin. When did these? When did the bulletproof suit come into play? That's part two, part, right? Part two. part two. That's where they really expanded upon the world of the, the assassins world. for real. That's what they built. Real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we so, saw the hotel in part one, but part two is where they doubled down with. But John here's Wick what doesn't make sense. I mean, I I enjoy it and it's cool. Yes, and I go. Okay, cool. That's the. Those are the rules of the film. So we're going along with. You got to go with it. Except for part one. He busts open his floor. He's got his, you know, his gold chips because he's part of the world. It was more subtle in part one, right? There's like hints of the thing being the thing. Well, it wasn't the thing. In part but he does two, suit up. He puts on that suit. But in part two, in the in the hotel, the concierge, they're the ones that fit him with the bulletproof suit. Like they hook him up in part two. But he would have owned it. Maybe it not. Been maybe, the suit. Maybe, maybe the bulletproof suits came out after because he's been retired for a while in part one. Okay. Either way, to, right? the dude You're got right. hit by six cars. You have to like this can't be the a, <laughs> you gotta, part four. Let me jump to the a little bit ahead. So Wait, let's go. start at the beginning of part four. Part right. four, we have the world's deadliest assassin on horseback just missing round after round after. Like he can't hit anything on He's horseback. A horse. Jack comes from slack. Please, <laughs> I saw him snipe a whole building on car back. <laughs> True. True. I actually missed the beginning because I got a little late. I got there when um, Donnie Yen was sitting there listening to the violin. Donnie Yen steals this yeah. film. He is so phenomenal. No, way, way, way. He's phenomenal. This is Keanu Reeves' film. Come no, on. Donnie Yen crushed every single you mean moment Daredevil? he had. You mean Daredevil? Yes. He did. He, well, no, Stick. He's more like Stick. He I mean, his name's like even Kane. Come on. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I was thinking Cain and Abel. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it, he's, he's, he's the blind swordsman, man. He is Which is fun swordsman. that he yeah. gets to play it, but maybe a little offensive because the blind swordsman is traditionally Japanese and Donnie Yen is definitely not. But it's not the blind swordsman. You're he's right. Kane. It's Cain. And Donnie Yen steals this movie and for me. I think he is Cain and Abel because the whole thing was he's the bad brother, right? He's the brother part of their brotherhood, part of their pact that is doing what I do to survive his daughter for to survive. Like, like John, Mark, Wick you know why you're a good actor? 
I got cast in a, a film where I was playing a clown, and my clown's character's name was Bubbles. And the director thought, it's Bubbles, because he is bubbly. That's that's no, cane, like a blind guy uses a cane. It's no, it's Bubbles because he's, he's, he's fragile. I thought that. I thought he's Bubble because he, he pops easy, and he's very actually it was a really emotional story for this clown, right? Bubbles, he's fragile. That's you in this cane thing, but you're wrong because he's a blind guy. <laughs> no, with a I'm stick. right. I'm right. Cane and Abel, brother. So we he gets pretty much told by the head of the table, right? Yo, we need you to take out John Wick. Like uh, John Wick has been just killing all of them for movies. It doesn't <laughs> matter how much they increase the bounty. So he's like, we need to get you in the game, or pretty much we'll kill your daughter. Because you owe just us. let him go. All he wanted to do was go be alone. Because he can't, he no, can't I, respect the table. You have two I, headphones I, for Judson Malone. All right, you got to listen to everything we say. <laughs> I know it's freaking weird. By part two and three, he freaking killed someone on consecrated ground in the hotel. You're right. He killed like he killed people he wasn't supposed to kill. So he's the villain of everyone else's story. Yeah. Oh yeah, but here's okay. So so Donnie Yen is like, I'm on it. John Wick's at this hotel, putting everyone in danger. Uh, it's pretty much their version of it. And he's there with this one guy he can trust, and like it hits the fan pretty quick. Now this We're fight talking scene about J- when he's in Japan, Japan yeah. the first yeah the, the first the, fight the, scene the, in, the, in, the, yeah, and the fight scene was great. But can I say, uh, uh, sorry, derail a little bit. Osaka is that beautiful? I believe like it. the way they shot Japan to look is exactly how it looks. It just looks that gorgeous. That's dope. And Osaka it. specifically. It and it, it's a nice change, you know, because New York, it had a different feel. And it's cool Grimey. to see this. It was cool to see this gritty fighting in such an elegant looking place. Even the hotel in New York, it has such an older kind of New York oh, feel. Oh, real quick. We didn't say it. So the, the Grand Marnier, Grand Marnier, that's a drink. The Grand, whatever his name is, the French dude goes. They re- they remove the, the the decree from the continental. And they blow up the continental, and that's and that's when they move right. to to the continental Osaka. Which, well, and they kill uh, uh, the concierge. So the concierge, the concierge, yeah, which was just kind of tragic. Um, what happened to the dog? John Wick left a dog there. King has a dog. That's that's King's. King, King is watching the dog. Okay, Lawrence okay. Fishburne's character. Yeah. And I what that. happened to Holly Berry's character? With all the dogs, I think she's. Sir, like, I, th- I think we I swapped think... her out for this uh, the the dusty GI Joe character who's got Timberwolf with him the whole movie. No, okay, we're gonna get to that. No, nobody. Was that there. character made no sense. That character. Why is he even there? Oh, He's a tracker. You. He's a tracker. But why is he there? Please. He made no sense, and he wasn't just a tracker, Chris. He was able to track people within. <laughs> They were getting on international flights to who knows where, and he was there before they even landed. No, he was all, so I don't know if you guys got. And he this. had the jankiest kind of like Indiana Jones flip book yes, that he had created. Like, like, what they, information was they on? They that almost thing? implied like he was psychic because he drew all these pictures of John Wick. I'm like, what's this guy? Like he sees us in his visions, and that's why he shows up. Who is this guy? Uh, I don't know what's. I don't know what the character sir. I was so confused. The story, and then he's but... got this backpack, which was really cool, and he oh, flips it. That was so dope. he's got his Kevlar thing. But then at the end of the movie, what you didn't know was he's actually got glass beer bottles in his backpack the whole time that he's protecting. Jack, drink with his Jack, dog. you can't poke holes in that when this guy got hit by seven cars. Yeah, no, no. let's talk <laughs> about just, the car stuff too. Let's talk about the first fight scene. Oh, you're right. Okay, Sorry. So we're back in Japan. We're back in Japan. They're fighting this hotel. The freaking daughter, that was so sick. The daughter was like wearing that like, you know, the whatever concierge uniform and then she just pulls that thing. Like they're all Ready. She put it. Was that a, thing it wasn't bulletproof, though. It might yeah, have been. I was confused that they went to Japan, which, if you've been to Japan, some of the greatest technology in the world is in Japan, and these guys are not running around in bulletproof. Well, get-ups? they're not. They're not. Maybe it was these. These also look like high powered rounds, too. And listen, I, she didn't know there was going to be a war today. She thought she can go to work and have dinner with her dad tonight. Like she's she's not part. Yeah. You know, she was dressed for some kind of. She like always <laughs> is. And the fighting was pretty. The fighting was pretty cool. It was a little slow in areas. Yeah, here. it was. A, it was a little repetitive. I like the ritualisticness of like Keanu with the nunchucks 
and he kept putting them back over his neck and you're like, okay, this is a guy who's he's religious in nature of how he uses his weapons and his objects. He's very practiced. Right. So I appreciated that, but then every, like these guys were almost too overpowered for it to be the opener of the movie. Right. Like we started the movie at the last level of the video game and it, it's like, it takes so much just to get one guy dead. Yo, like a lot of shots to that. And also because, and then Donnie and they, 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 Kane's character had an issue with the way they depicted the blindness because it was like, oh, this guy's really blind. And he has I to put so like with he has to put rent sensors around so he can establish. So how does he fight John Wick in a no. shootout? In a shootout <laughs> and, and in a bar scene with like pumping music. No, Donnie Yen's the logistics of Donnie Yen's character made no sense, but. That guy crushed what he was given to play with. Right. But yeah. I'm talking like, about like the scene. His, Jack, let's they- just talk about where we at for a second before you yeah, jump okay. to yeah, another sorry. scene. So he's placing these doorbells around. And I'm like, okay, so you you don't have that sixth sense. You don't no. have that thing. You actually have to like, they have to make noise and stuff, which made me go like, there's no way you can fight John Wick. And then they're fight, he's fighting John Wick and he he has he doesn't know if he's dead or not. He can't even hear him breathing or not. Yeah, yeah, then, yeah. That, John, that, you that's, that's how easy it would be to take this guy out. Like his blindness wasn't one of those things in these movies where it, it makes him stronger. It, it didn't make him a better fighter. No, but it wasn't consistent. The way it was depicted wasn't consistent. In right. some moments you were like, he's got, in some moments he's literally like the daredevil. Yeah. Where you're like, he's got some sort of sixth sense. He's like, uh, Rucker Howard in that Blind Fury movie. It's like this guy is so well trained, he can slice a piece of a paper airplane coming at him in the you know. And then in other move moments, it's like, yeah, it really didn't make sense. It's like you can't hear him. Not only you couldn't hear him breathing, he was shifting on glass. Yeah. And they put the sound effects of the glass kind of creaking under him. And you're like John Wick would just kill you. Right, and then and then in his first fight, you establish those doorbells. So you're you're telling me from the beginning, this guy has to plant ways he can detect. He can't just detect you without help. So I'm like, how does he become the final final fight? Look at guy. this. They, they also did stuff where they made it really like they really paid homage to the fact that this character is blind. The way they made him feel feel around the space, to, to and when he ran out of glass. bullets. Yeah. When he ran out of bullets in the gun he was shooting, you literally see him put his finger Bigger, in down, the, Yeah, down, yeah. Which I thought that was such a nice detail, but also it's like, he's not even counting bullets. No. So it's like, there's such no. a weird kind of... And to me, that's a horrible detail because a guy like John Wick knows he's out because the weight is different. Like, like these guys are trained. I, I'm out of bullets because the gun feels lighter. But just by a fraction. Saying. It's like they're, they're spoon feeding his blindness in one sense with like the stuff like checking the gun. Like, that's so... It was kind of weird, though, how he checked the gun. Like, I don't know why he stuck his finger down the chamber. He, sh- he should just pop the clip out and press it. Because when you load a clip, you can feel the resistance, like like this. Like, you feel like... Wait, why? <laughs> why is it is just standing happening? right there? Yeah. Like, why is the guy got like... a bulletproof vest and just ready? <laughs> when, when it's full, there's so much resistance in the spring. And then as you pull, take out the, the bullets, it gets looser and looser and looser. And right, like, but that's what I'm talking about. How there wasn't the, like there was a lot of really cool ideas, but th- it actually just went against the continuity of his character. What world are we in? And, and 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 I was waiting for the trope that I wanted. You're blind. Shut off the power. Make right. everybody blind. Then right, we're sick. welcome to my world of darkness. Like, like I, right. I'm like that's every piece of content that involves a blind fighter. Always they you need to have that, or else right. he's at a disadvantage. Right. Shut yeah. off the freaking lights. Anyways, so we're out of there. John Wick is he's moving around. Uh, what happens next? Uh, oh, so so then so wait. So the then, daughter gets shot. The daughter and then, gets um, shot. We got Donnie uh, Yen versus the hotel owner. Yep, this, this is, is a the, dope sword fight. It is. The dad dies. He tells John before the dad dies. He tells John Wick, you know, don't like don't make that. And that actor is a great actor, man. Yo, he's he awesome. played uh, and everything. Scorpion, Bullet Train. Yeah. Yeah. So then he tells John Wick to get out of here. John Wick gets on the subway. The daughter gets on the subway. The daughter's like, oh, the guy does a, a, a kill Bill moment 
Like I'll be waiting for you. Like, hey, like can, can we before that moment, I loved it when she was like reaching for the sword, and he was like, "No, live today." He was like, "I like." He just told her, "Live." I'll be waiting for you later, but live. Because if you grab that sword, yep. it's going to be a wrap for you. But he did it in a, such a compassionate way. like. But that's yeah. what he, like, Donnie Yen playing the pseudo villain antagonist for so much of the film really worked because you knew his heart was good or right. as good as John Wick's, you know? Right. Like he right. was, and and actually maybe more so in this film. Better. Because Cause what is John Wick even fighting for? Right. This guy's oh, literally yeah. just trying to safeguard his family. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's also why someone like Donnie Yen's character steals this movie, you know? John Wick. Mm. So we see Lawrence Fishburne. And if you want to ask me who steals this movie, Fishburne got so much swag in two seconds. <laughs> he's got <laughs> so. But he's a lot less crazy than he was in the other films. Like he's, his he's brain smooth, has right? mellowed out a little bit. Yeah. He got cut I mean, he's able to thing. fly on a plane international. So clearly something. <laughs> yeah, he still rocks the same homeless outfit, though. Hey. You only ain't showered <laughs> in months. Um, it's just really cool to see him and Keanu back because that's what we missed in Matrix 4. How was is this not a Matrix movie? It is in my mind when I watched it. This is a simulation for Neo. That's why all these guys are like agents. That's why they can take a beating and nothing happens. And bullets just bounce off vests. Bullets bounce off vests. I will say I liked it when he took his jacket off at the end and they yes. were like knocking yes. the shells out. And you hear the shell and his Beautiful touch. Yeah, Beautiful freaking touch. But it still didn't make any sense. Because where there's no holes. What are they stuck to? Yeah, anyway. what are they stuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even understand. Because the fabric over the Kevlar should have been kind of torn up a bit. Like these suits are yeah. so pristine. That's fine. It's fine. Um so I mean, even uh, Superman's suit got destroyed in his fights. True. 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 Um, so as as it's going on, like the bounty is going up. Black dude, he saves John Wick because he's like, listen, the bounty's not high enough because I want to buy this ranch for my dog. I need this bounty to get higher, so I'm gonna keep you alive. The bounty goes higher. He's like, okay. He goes to cut a deal with the the, the, the head of the table guy, who stabs him in the hand and says, show me your loyalty by lacerating all your tendons. Yes. <laughs> I don't understand any of this. And he says, okay, I'll pay you whatever. And but it was just a, but it was just a hunt, John Wick, not to kill him. And then right, the, right. The, the, those changed as he was on the field. Him. Right. So then John Wick he goes to that freaking church, which and was the like guy's a, already there. Got, right. <laughs> and the guy was already there. Listen, he's good. He's good. So John Wayne, and I believe this is the church. This is where he was from. These are the people that raised him, I think. I think they were introduced some part. Yeah, that's his family. Three. Yeah, that, that that's the fa- like the assassin family that he was part of. Right. Um, since he was a child, I think it yeah. said. And, that's where he uh, became Baba Yaga. So they said, you need to go to this hotel and kill, I, I, you know, I think I took a Kill nap. Kingpin. Yeah, kill Kingpin. Um, oh, yeah. That's Kingpin. <laughs> and why Kingpin's guys, King, now Kingpin's guys don't have bulletproof vests, but they do have Hatchets. They have yes. It's Germany. Yeah. Why are they run around with hatchets? And that's how you run around in Germany. That's what you do. Is this a gun movie. movie or not? Now you call a flag on that. I call a flag at a shootout and a massive fight in a club, and everyone's still dancing. Like no, no, I call a flag on that too. And then what? Here's where the bigger flag is because when John Wick's leaving the club, that's when everyone flees. I'm yeah. like, this dude <laughs> fell off the top. <laughs> The first gunshot, it should have been pandemonium in there. Yeah, maybe it's different in Germany, man. Maybe they, they built different. Maybe. So basically, he's at a table before this. You got Kingpin, you got John Wick, you got the black dude with a dog, <laughs> and Donnie Yen, and they all have different reasons for wanting to kill him or keep him alive. That and poker scene was so contrived. I, lo- I lost the whole plot there. Like, I, f- I don't even really remember. I mean, I happened. don't know. It was very, very James Bond-esque. And then he cheated. And then he was like, I, you know. But you knew he wasn't playing. You knew no. You knew it wasn't playing before it even, the game even started. Right. Yeah. It's just not that kind of movie. You're just playing time. You're playing the clock down. Bond makes sense when you sit down and have a martini. Here, it's like, why y'all sitting down talking? Just shoot somebody. And he starts cutting them up with the freaking cards. Now, I need to look up this actor who played the Kingpin guy, because that dude can freaking move. He was a <laughs> sick martial artist. <laughs> Man, yeah, he, he was. Kicked. He really was the Kingpin. He was Kingpin. He's big. 
He's but he's mad agile and he's throwing he's freaking nasty kicks. He's mad strong, throwing him around and like, durable because they fell off that second story balcony like thing twice. or whatever and like got up. Um, and then he kills him by throwing oh, him drop, down, dropping him, stairs. but then still continue to and then knocked out his tooth, oh. brought the tooth, That's yeah, cool. ripped out his tooth. Keanu Reeves f- falls down a lot of stairs, flights of stairs in a this movie. A lot of stairs. Jack, in one scene, he falls down 600 and like 44 steps. Because that 222 steps, he fell down like three times. <laughs> one scene. Wait, Which he also fell great. down a flight of stairs in this scene. Almost intentionally. I mean, that's how, I mean, it's just like real life. You can be a, a 50-year-old man and roll down a huge flight of stairs and just get up like, ah. Well, when you're wearing a Kevlar... Uh... Taylor Obvious, made suit, obviously. I suppose it's impact proof. You so, didn't know it was vibranium lined. <laughs> no, we didn't. So he brings the tooth back to the church. They set them back as a brotherhood. And now he's able to make a deal. Now we can say, I can call this duel. Winston's here this whole time. Winston's like, I'll help the parlay because I want to get my hotel back. So he's like, here's a duel. He has a family backing him. He's back in the good graces. These are the rules. Without rules, we're just animals. So the duel is being set up. Basically, if John Wick loses, not only does he die, but Winston dies. And if the other guy, whatever, and the other guy, it's, I, w- I wish he would have fought. Because I was yeah. like, don't give me the weak, so- cowardice, like, freaking villain. Like, give me give me something a little different in this universe. I didn't understand. I thought he challenged him. I didn't understand how he that Because he called a surrogate. He can call him, yeah, a nomination. A challenger. You can call someone to fight your your gladiator, just like Game of Thrones. Bro, uh, oh yeah, Pedro, Pedro Pascal scene. Yeah, 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 and yeah, yeah. yeah. Freaking uh, Kane is so indebted to this guy. It's like if you don't do anything I say, we can do. We, the funny we, thing about debts in these John Wick films is, it's like you pay the debt off, but then they recant it anyways, and you're like, "Yo, I thought we shook on it." Well, he <laughs> they implied like he gave his eyes to get out, but that right. was it. That wasn't enough. I yeah, don't like, know. Yeah, and, that's, and, that's exactly. No, no, they didn't play. They, they out. He said, "I gave my eyes." In other like, films, they would have a coin, and if I cash this coin, you have to do what I say, because this coin with your blood in it is like you owe me. That's right. right. A, a that was blood. in the other films, but right. here, I don't know what they had on him. But basically, he asked him. He he made him fight for him, which kind of sucks because you really do establish that him and John did have a brotherhood beyond well, the three the of rules. them in the beginning. The three of them, yeah, had a bond beyond the brotherhood. And that's kind of where you see the arcs here for Donnie Yen understanding, like, what is family? What is family? And, oh, this is the best part. This is where John Wick's arc made sense. I'm going to jump to the end a little bit here, and then we can go back. His arc made oh, sense. The end. He said, the bad guy said to John Wick, the, the, his henchman said, why are you sending a blind man to fight, John? Because the blind dude has something to live for, something to die for, and something to yeah. kill for. John mm-hmm. Wick has none of those things. And I'm sitting there going, like, you idiot. By putting his best friend in a fight with him, you gave him something to live for, something to die for, something to kill for. By telling him Winston will die if I lose, and if my best friend doesn't go in along with this, you kill his daughter. Now you gave me all the energy I need. That's really interesting there. Yeah. That's really interesting. Why there. That's, that's silly. Why? Hey, you know, he was actually really phenomenal. The the actor. Oh, he's he? he's a, a Skarsgård. Skarsgård, yeah. yeah. He played uh, it. Uh, he's anyways, fantastic. Yeah. Because he didn't, he could have easily slipped into what lesser actors would have done, which is mustache twirling. But he stayed grounded, even though the material wanted him to mustache twirl. He, he created didn't. a whole thing there, was just. Yeah. And usually I was looking at him like, I should feel like you're too young to be in this position. But no, the gravitas no, no, and depth that, yes. it was there. Yeah, it was I there because we felt similar but very different when we saw that uh, that that um, Ryan Gosling uh, joint. Remember way back with Chris Evans, like the two assassins. Oh, fighters? the great man. Yes, and Reggie Valjean was like the head of it. Yeah, he, a part of him felt so youthful. Like I didn't yeah. buy that you have yeah. the, the gravitas to control yeah, these men. Like this he was way. raised in like the you know upper yeah. crust, and he's been groomed for this role. Right, but like. That's also the human. That, that, that's why. Act, that's why casting. It's like gravitas and depth is something that an actor can work on. But usually, you come in with, with what you have. And this kid has this grown man has. Yeah. Well. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, so we got the duel going. It's pretty simple, Jack. Jack, it's pretty freaking simple. Show up to the church at sun. And it's pretty cool how they like 
took turns flipping the cards over to see who gets the answer. Yeah, yeah it's, that was again, cool. it's establishing the world in subtle ways. Like yeah, this is just how rules, it's done. It's always been done. Which the card game did nothing for me because it didn't matter. This was like this matters. If we're gonna sit down and stop, it mm. has to matter. And all you gotta do is get to the church by sun sunrise. Pretty easy, right? I like how so. Wick was like right now. <laughs> Because <laughs> he knew yeah. that it's like I don't want to fight all of freaking now. Paris all today, of yeah. all of all France, of today. Like- and no sunset, and then this dude sunrise, sunrise, excuse me, and they put a bounty on his head again. Yeah. He already has but, one. What is this? And the, but the bounty they put on the head was the same amount of money that the guy didn't want to re- give to the tracker, but now he gave it to everybody. And it's only like by six million. So it's yeah, like but you already I, got I, a twenty million bounty. I think when you million, raise it, it goes automatically goes to everyone as an open everyone. contract. It's the rules, Jack. And then they're playing it in the radio. Now here's the here's what I miss in this film, which was there in the first one. In the first movie, uh the crime boss, the father of the son who screwed the pooch, mm-hmm. he said this guy is the guy who kills the boogeyman. There was a healthy right. fear. All these assassins getting alerted to kill John Wick. I needed some of them to go. I'm good. I'm, not, I'm, I'm staying here. Like this oh, guy. yeah. I was waiting for that, too. At least but, some of them. But then I was like, well, maybe they don't know him as well in France. Or maybe they just maybe they just think, you know, John Wick's getting well, old. French, they're very pretentious people, so. They would have, or, or, <laughs> just, these, these just movies kidding. also might have been. All you listeners out in France, I take that back. <laughs> not really, though. <laughs> I think these movies also are all a short amount of time. So it's not like the legend of what he did in New York might have gotten across the water yet. I think they're all within Maybe, like but, a year and a half. The second, the second, his second best friend is in Osaka, John Wick is suddenly international. It's not like whatever his exploits were, um, you know, he's, ancillary to He's, to he's America. killing so many assassins and decorated assassins. Yeah, that I needed these guys to go. That's not enough money. Yeah, no, that's not, what I'm saying. Not John Wick. Yeah. Well, that's now John, no, that's when that joint got to forty million, <laughs> maybe they're like, maybe we can give it a shot. But like the way he's capping everybody, and these guys keep coming in like the puppy and, patrol. And the majority of the people in France don't even have the really nice suits. No, they're like they're like bottom feeder assassins. Uh, yeah, I I think there's a hierarchy of assassins, and I think these guys are like the entry level everyday assassins. Yeah, may, like, like, why are there so look. many? Why are there so many assassins in France? That many people. That many there was people. there was that many assassins in New York. He did I the know. same thing in New York. I, and then there's no there's no police. You can have a shootout at the, the Arc de Triomphe, and then be like running no. around. No police. No police. I thought about that, but that's in every. Everywhere they went, there wasn't no Except authority. For the first one, when the police showed up, like, you working again, John? And then he's like, not really. That, in part one. Yes. Yes. Part. That's what I'm saying. Part one was subtle. Part one was... This part is one a... wasn't just gratuitous action sequences over and over again. There was a story and stakes. And, and, and before the movie even starts, you're endeared to the character. The thing about a fourth movie is you've established all that stuff that makes you love John Wick, but the movie itself actually makes you love Donnie Yen and have empathy for his character. So unless you got a refresh of the other John Wicks moving into this one, you might, I don't know, you might not as much. I didn't feel for him as much because to me, they're all assassins, dude. Yes. And the only reason your daughter is in harm's way is because you're a bad because guy. The choices you made. Right? You guys are all bad people. No, no one's a victim of circumstance in this movie. Everyone. Right. Ooh. They're all bad. Yeah. And, but yeah, John, Donnie Yen has the arc, but, and they're very smart. When he killed that girl's father. Oh, so bad. And a guy who was like, you're my brother. That's what made me go, I can't, I'm not with you. Yeah. I don't know who I'm with. Yeah, but I'm not yeah. with you. Yeah. And so, okay, so the assassins got the bat signal and they're coming out of every, like, every, yeah. oh, the cafe, look, you start shooting shots. Yeah. <laughs> and John Wick is just trying to stay alive. And, and 
It is crazy. Say this too. There's a lot of traffic on the road. You ever go outside at 4 a.m. in the morning? That's a witching hour, man. There ain't nothing on the street that you want to be around. Not, not You're fast. right. It played like it was like 7 p.m. Yeah, it played like yeah. rush hour. The it was maybe, like rush hour. Well, maybe that, was, it was. that scene made maybe no sense. All the, the this this fighting was over the course of five hours. <laughs> He got hit by a car. He got slammed into a van. No, that, that that staircase, when he first started traversing the staircase, he had, what, over a half hour? Yeah, and then, and then the last minutes. time he fell, so let's jump ahead. Yeah, so he, he had like three minutes, to, three yeah, to five so, minutes the last so, time to get up. Yeah, so he gets to the top of the staircase, and the second in command, the Spanish dude, sees him, and freaking Spartan kicks him down the staircase, got, and he tumbles. Got, he goes the whole way. Got, the whole got, after a while, it got a little comical. <laughs> yeah, after a while, after, after a while, like, you're, like, you're like, "How many? St- is he really going to go down the entire flight of stairs?" Don't like skip that? the massive fight scene. So he's fighting oh, France. The best fight scene in the best fight scene there was. I mean, my favorite kill is when two dudes got hit by a car and went airborne, and he no, shot no, no. them in the air. You skip the better fight scene. The fights, the better fight scene, isn't the one around the arc. The, the trio. Or whatever it's called. The best fight scene is the one that was inside the abandoned building. Oh, where they had the the shots. no, that was an awesome. That that was video game. Yeah. yeah I that love that. Yes. that. That was sick. Dude, I laughed so freaking hard. And I should I was the only person who laughed in the theater. And it was such a horrible thing to laugh at. It was really terrible. He he dragon breath dragon. shotgun fires the one guy. Yeah. And he's shooting two other guys as the guy who was already on fire somehow does this circle around into another room that he's in. And he just dragon breaths him back up so, the entryway twice. Cool. So dragon breath is real. So it's 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 phosphorus in a 12-gauge shell. So it shoots Chris, like- let's not teach them how to make this. No, no, no. You can buy it. No, you can buy <laughs> let's it. Let's not tell them they can buy this. You can. But the problem is, is that it burns so hot, it ends up warping your barrel because phosphorus burns like a thousand degrees. Well, do you want to know something that's even sicker? The gun he's using in that is a fully autom- has the option of being a fully automatic shotgun with a banana clip. Yeah. You put this banana clip with like 12 rounds of shotgun shells in it and go bang, 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 bang. Dude. You're lighting the world on fire with that. Thing. The thing doesn't did. even make sense. Like, that, why that gun exists in the first place. It would have been so Reasons. cool if he was fighting yeah, as the place caught on fire. I was waiting for it How to was be it on not fire. catching it on fire? It should have caught on fire. Phosphorus <laughs> burns it over a thousand degrees. A I, thousand degrees. I was like, why is it not on fire? And how dope would it have been if they're fighting through fire? Uh, that one sequence, that, that building sequence of fighting made the whole movie for me, though. That it had cool. the combat choreography that's beautiful to watch in its violence um and the way it was shot man it shot it was shot in a way that was on my edge of this for me the movie didn't even start till he was actually in paris it's like everything was kind of lead up for john wick to start and then finally well, it that, started the massive boss battle now i that was that moment where i felt like this is repetitive Ooh, what's this? Yeah. Like look, yeah. those moments that now but I, the whole thing was shot different. Yeah, it was cool. It was, it oh, was it was so cool. cool. I enjoyed the fight scene with the cars looping around. I wish they saved him getting anyone getting hit by a car for that scene. Like, don't have him get hit by a car before this scene. This is the scene where cars are the obstacle. Don't 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 waste it earlier. Right. They did, and it was pretty cool watching them evade cars. I wish getting hit by a car mattered. The dog got hit by a car and bounced up like nothing. So if you're having a scene where being hit by a car doesn't matter, then I'm no longer scared that you're going to get hit by a car. So then what's the point of having the fight here? People should have got hit by a car and that's a wrap for you. So we're Dude, but, nervous. But in the but you got to go back to the first fight sequence, the one in Osaka. He's hitting people not in their finely tightly woven kevlar tailor-made eloquent suits he's hitting people in the faces with nunchucks Mm -hmm. you ever been hit in the face with a baseball bat no no rich has he he pretty much only takes one hit you get one hit and you're kind of out of the fight these guys are getting hit over and over and over again and stepping back up right and that's that's martial art films but no but it's not john wick one John Wick 1 was so beautiful in its Jack, 
It's we're at John Wick four. So Back two, three, three, and four. It's two, three, and four. Die Hard. It's Die Hard one was a regular guy in a bad situation. Live for your Die Hard. He's jumping cabs into hell. Right. There's there's, <laughs> there's more of those movies in this right. franchise than there is of the first one. So yeah, they, you're right. You're right. You're right. But we all look at getting hit by a car as a pretty big deal. You can and. The whole scene was don't get hit by a car. But like if you get hit by a car, nothing happens to you. So then what's the point of having a scene where the car is? I just want to know why there were so many cars on the road at that hour. Reasons. Reasons. Yeah, I didn't really I didn't think about it at that time. No, and and the second there's a massive accident, traffic does one of two things. They it, didn't care. <laughs> they traffic like, either backs up and stops, stops and backs up, or diverts and starts going a different way. This these guys just kept going in circles <laughs> around. Look, I'm just like, I'm a I don't care. If people are shooting. I'm. St- I gotta go to work. I want to go to work. Um. So then he gets out of that and he makes it to the steps. <laughs> yep. And it, it's wonderfully obnoxious how it hard really- it is for him to get up these steps. I really enjoyed. It. That was the first time in this film where I felt like how hard it is really paid off. Like, I felt the time. I felt yeah. like you got to get up these steps. How are you going to get up the steps? I was, I, I, I enjoyed this too. I, I, I enjoyed it. But I didn't need him starting back over with five minutes. No. Because that, that became, it was less. I think like two minutes. Oh, yeah, it was six o'clock back. in the morning or like five, four, five. Right. Minutes. And we just saw him do it. You and, know? and then Donnie, this is where Donnie Yen's blindness made even less, it made the least amount of sense in the entire movie for me. Keanu Reeves just starts calling off numbers on the clock right you six o'clock eight o'clock whatever clock but he only says that about three times and they traverse 600 steps and they take out you know another 30 guys yeah so many people are dead but <laughs> so many people body, are dead. i was trying it's to so find a touching. body count i was trying to but find a this is where donnie yen's blindness then just doesn't make sense in the film again this is where he turns into a, a daredevil character yeah you know yeah and I was waiting for him. Honestly, I was waiting for him to be only mostly blind when he took his glasses off. I was like, let's have the reveal where he's not. But then, but what's then the, he if, like, if he's if he's mostly blind, then I was like, then what's the point? Just make him. 140. See. Body count, 140. Really? I feel like it's 140 in one scene. <laughs> no, it, t- it takes him 10 minutes to kill one guy in the first scene. Yeah, yeah they're not as easily to kill. So oh, no, eventually- 339 with no, no, okay. the total, the total to kill count is 339 with 140 in John Wick alone. Part four. <laughs> yes. Yes. Part I mean, four. Part yes. four. Yes. So 339 in the total franchise. Yes. And 140 of those kills come from John Wick four. In the franchise. Yeah. 130. So he doubles his thing right at the end. So. Yeah. They make it up the stairs. And this is actually kind of cool. I like this moment with Kane because it's like, I'm going to help you get up there so we can have our duel. It, right. it, it's well, better because for him. Kane needs to have the duel if he wants his freedom too, though. Right. Kane if, doesn't get what he wants if John Wick doesn't have the duel. But if he doesn't show up, then it's a forfeit. No, but he doesn't get what he wants. Kane yeah, has to he, win the duel in order to get his daughter's freedom. freedom. Right, right. So Kane, it's so it's self serving on Kane's. Part to help John Wick get up the stairs, right? Which makes sense, which I appreciate because it gives this guy the right motivation to do what he's doing. It's not and then, he, and then he stabs John Wick through the hand as they're walking, and John was like, I, "Oh, you mother skunk!" But he's also like, "But well, your debt is paid <laughs> for helping me back yeah. there. <laughs> You're good now." He said, "We're even. We're even." Yeah. They get to yeah, the church, even. and they 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 they're having this duel. Walk thirty paces. The dude oh, calls geez. fire. Oh, what the blind man. And which is like, and when I was like, you're, you're having a duel with a blind man, and in the first fight you set up, he needs markers to know where you are. Right. I guess he figures he's dead ahead, so he shoots straight. Well, the other thing I that was, was a profile. Yeah, you just he not did. Just you saw John Wick turn a little profile. I was like, well, that's smart, but but Kane was standing totally square. It was. It's a weird duel. So basically, but you knew right off the top that John Wick wasn't trying to kill him. Because yeah. if John Wick was trying to kill him right hand or left hand, however you needed to want to shoot, because he was shooting left in the last scene, because because Kane stabbed him in the right hand, yeah. which for someone who needs markers, 
pretty surgical. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty on point. Perfect. What if he got him in the junk by accident? Yeah. <laughs> 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 what are you doing? I was going for your hand. You can't yeah, see. You know, John Wick's not trying to kill him. No. Right? Well, I also suspended my disbelief around like these freaking old style guns are may not be as accurate as their freaking tactics. But those look like pistols. modern old guns. Yeah, they were. Yeah. That was like a brand new gun with a classic vibe. Because it was yeah. nine millimeter too, was it like that? I don't know. It was, yeah. weird, it was some weird caliber. So they, they do the duel, and pretty much every round. It's like the caliber you used to take a horse down. Yeah. Right. It was like a 50 cal. They pretty much hit their mark every round, and add, they have to walk 10 more paces in until someone dies. And they both hit each other in the arm. John Wick takes one to the freaking trap, while uh, Donnie Yen takes one to the gut. And then and th- I figured this is where I figured out the end right here. Now, I thought they were just going to cap that guy in the head. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking he was just trying to get closer. Yeah. No, but John D- Kane shoots. John yeah. Wick goes down. Ugh. Bleeding out. And then the freaking leader is like, I will do that. I'll have the coup de gras. And then Winston is like, There's rumors. Arrogant mother. He didn't shoot. <laughs> Bang. Which made me go. John Wick just somehow became the hero of the franchise again. Yep. He took the shots. Yep. Anticipating there'll be a, there'll be room for it. Yep. And I also think Kane also wasn't shooting headshots either. No. They were both not doing what they, they were probably somehow. Did. Yeah, I felt that too. I felt like they were somehow buying time, shooting to enough to feel it out. But Kane knew, same as John knew. Kane knew after the first shot that I don't need to kill John, yeah. which is why John gave him permission to shoot him at the end. Mm-hmm. He kind of like gave him the signal, take the shot. That's what I'm setting up. It's why I haven't killed you yet, you idiot. And, and, and he doesn't go for a kill shot, although he maybe sh- he does. He shoots him in the gut. <laughs> I mean, he shoots him in the gut. Yeah, he shoots him in the gut. But it has to look like he's lost. Right. Um. Yeah, he, so he shoots the bad guy in the head and then... All is well. And the dude says, John Wick, you are free. You are free. You guys are free. Everyone's free. And then right. the helpers come in and clean up, which is amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, no one helps John down the steps to the hospital. Instead, they let him just die on the top of the six. Oh, yeah. no, he doesn't he's really free. die. He is only he really dead? Possibly. No, of course not. Yeah. If you don't see a body going to the ground, and even sometimes then, he's done count. He's not because dead. King, he never saw King, a body. Yeah, because King and Winston were too jovial at his... At his uh, at his grave. Yeah. Well, King sure. never even saw the body. Winston was the only one who was there. Who I think, like, me home, Winston. I think John Wick is dead unless they want to do another one. But that's what it is. It's left just ambiguous enough, enough where because yep. they could they could have gave us that Dark Knight Rises ending where we see him in Italy somewhere, and I thought they would, <laughs> but they didn't. And but they gave us that. Where do you think John is? Heaven or hell? He's like, who knows where John is? And I'm like, are you talking about heaven or hell or who knows where John is? Yeah, exactly. It's ambiguous. If, um, it's it's pretty much if the if this movie makes enough money, then he's alive. Not and, when it will. And it's more a question of when and if the actor ever wants to pick up the franchise again. Keanu and the director said they need a break. If yeah. there's if there's gonna be a John Wick five, they're like, we need a he's probably in pain, dude. <laughs> like yeah. this this looks like it hurt. This is not like he's got such a what's the word he's he moves he's an older actor at this point and he's definitely moving differently than he was in the first the movie, first movie but it's also kind of endearing he's kind of cute in his awkward tall gangly awkwardness of just he's he's got, like, he is he a also got hit by like 10 cars and jumped out of a four-story building and landed on a van he's yeah. still That's walking like better absolutely a, a, a volkswagen van will always break your fall you get up just fine he but he only like, catches about half the van in that shot, does. Chris. Then <laughs> his head just hits the ground. Yeah. Um, and then I stayed for the mid credit. I w- I wanted to know why no one had like a had face so mask bad. made out of the same material if it deflects bullets so well. What happened to the mid credit? I, I, do I mean, rag. Oh, a mid. A mid. Yeah. The mid credit was you see Kane walking to see his daughter or hear hear her daughter 
He's walking to his daughter. He has the flowers in his hand. And then you see the daughter of the father that he killed in the beginning walking towards him. You see her, a knife come out with her hand in her hand, and then it goes to black. So you don't know what happens. And honestly, I think she's dead. <laughs> because Cain, when he dead. says, when he says, come, when he said to her, I'll be waiting for you, that means I'm always <laughs> waiting for this moment. You're right. never gonna catch me at a time where I don't think you're coming. And she when, when the camera went to her face, she didn't look like stone cold killer. She has so much humanity. It looked like you saw nervousness. You saw a slight trepidation. You saw like what would happen if someone's doing this for the first time. And I'm like, you better, you better, you better take your shot as good as you can because you will be dead on this sidewalk. Problem ASAP. with a knife is you got to be pretty close. Oh, but it was such a crowd and everyone's gathering to hear her sing. So she's able to get close to him pretty easily. It's just... What does that mean? And that that's that's that that's the mid credit. No John Wick. Uh, maybe they're setting up a spinoff with her. Out of the Armis is gonna be the spinoff ballerina. That's Sp- the spin a bunch of them off, man. Oh, yeah, I like this universe. I like I the think... world. I like the universe. I like the whole Assassin's League. I like. I like. That. I think it's cool. I, I I want a John Wick prequel series. I yeah. want to know what it was like in his teens and twenties, learning this stuff. Yeah. I mean, in that, and they, I think in well, part they're making one, a prequel series. To, for for John Wick, uh, I don't know, but the the concierge is in it. Yeah, that's the ballerina. That's the ballerina yeah. with, with, with Anna de Armas. But I yeah. want to see like John Wick, twenty year old, because Willem Dafoe's character in part one was like his mentor. Like yeah, I want to see like how did you learn? Because dude grabs nunchucks, he's dope. He gets on a motorcycle, knows exactly what to do. Like it doesn't matter which firearm he grabs. He's I'm like, where did you learn this? I would yeah, love to how see. How did you become Baba Yaga? That's what. How did you come the boogeyman? Yeah. Yeah, and where did Fishburn get the Viper? That's like a five thousand dollar gun or something crazy. Let me tell like you. That. Let me tell you something. More. He had Fishburn is such a great actor because all he did was had to give you swag, and I yeah. bought it. Yeah, I said, right. yeah, you probably yeah, yeah, I, yeah you got sure. it. How he's like a guy I shot did. a guy who knew a guy had a yeah, guy yeah. had this gun, and <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. Came with a case too. Yeah. Ah, oh, so sick, man. Um, yo, that's pretty much the movie. It's it's yeah. it it is it is a it's a video game. It it's is. A, it's a button smasher video game where you only have to learn a few moves, and it might feel repetitive until you get to this one level that brings you right back in. So, it's the. What do you guys rate this thing? I give it a seven. I okay. liked it a lot. Not a whole lot. You gave it a seven. Yeah, but I mean, it has its flaws. But you know, you rarely gonna get a fourth entry that's gonna be a freaking a gem the way the first one was. True. What do you rate this, Jack? By the time I mean, the third is usually one of the better ones. Right, right, right. But the fourth, not the Dark Knight Rises, with the exception of the Dark Knight Rises. But the Dark Knight, but the Dark, uh, the Dark Knight Returns, uh, or Dark Knight rather, just the Dark Knight breaks the trope of the second movie normally being bad. Terminator the Two movie is normally bad. Terminator Three was bad. Revenge of the Nerds Three was bad. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Um, I mean, man, these aren't even movies to me. This is just one long fight scene. Yeah. Yes. Two, two, That's how this feels. Are just kind of the same movie, just amped up. Like I the- would say, part one is like an eight point five. Yeah. Like it's it's, it's just good. that good. It's good. Part and one, no the- one expected it. No one expected that movie to be that good. Oh yeah. But it was that good. It was that good because it also had a story, albeit an easy story. It had a story you could hang your hat on and get behind. Right. Oh, you could support it and you understood it. Which is why he did. Oh yeah, and he doesn't care. That's why the black. Oh, we didn't even talk about the black dude with the dog. So because the, the black guy, guy with the dog made no sense in this film. He was Kill. only there for John to showcase his humanity. Oh, okay, wait. And, let's talk and about. And he kills the guy. He's going to kill the dog. The, to remind if something's us bulletproof, is it not toothproof? No, no, no. Because you, you, they are, you, they are. Uh, it's a different kind of force and. 
you are you are available. It's, you are prone to knives and stuff like it's, that. It's flex and it's flexible fabric. So even if the teeth aren't going through, you still got a vice grip on your balls. Yeah. <laughs> the way Goku best with it's it's the way it dissipates the energy, but the energy from a stab is different than the energy of a gunshot. How many times can a bulletproof vest be shot before its structural integrity is compromised? A co- if a bulletproof vest goes longer than a couple of years, its structural integrity is compromised. How long? Right. How many times do I get hit by a car before my body is structurally compromised? Uh, one mm-hmm. more. One more than however many times can a police guy hit by a car? <laughs> okay. I would have to listen. I'm begrudgingly giving this movie, uh, a, I think, a six point five. Okay. Um, the I would give the com some of the combat sequences. I would easily give a, a nine. Um, but the movie as a whole was a little too all over the place for me to 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 really say it was better than. It was better than Ant Man. It was definitely better than Ant Man. You yeah. know, I mean the the choreography is what this whole film was. Yeah. But a seven feels a little high, and a six feels way, way too low. So I guess I got to say six point five. Okay, Lawrence. Yeah, I'm kind of in between a seven and a six point five. So I'll go seven just because of the hard work they put into it. I was watching the movie, and I was just thinking about the raid while I was watching this, <laughs> and I was like, "There's." other movies that are doing what this movie is doing that I think on a higher level, because you have premier martial artists in it. Like the rate is crazy and it's pretty much is, it's uh, so good. And I feel like sometimes, you know, as Americans, we make these movies that are inspired by movies like the rate and other movies and it's good. But when you go and watch like the raid, it's like, Oh yeah, this is what we were trying to do. Um, watch any of uh, Tony Jaw's early films. Yeah, yeah. Those movies I mean, are just it's freaking. Go watch Donnie Yen's joints. I mean, I mean it man. You it, watch it man. Yeah, it's dope. Do but it's different. Is- but but this is gung fu, man. This like uh, equilibrium in this are kind of the raid. This is the raid too. Just one guy fighting hordes and hordes and hordes and using whatever you got, but the martial arts are so sick and these guys are like born and bred martial artists. It's just more you can do with the choreography. If I'm being honest, I feel like if the bulletproof suits weren't so comic bush bookish, I would have given this movie a, a much higher rating because suddenly the stakes would have mattered a little more and people would have had to behave a little differently. So I accepted the comic bookness. Once we got into that, we had Daredevil, we had Kingpin, we had like, bulletproof suits, and they're 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 ducking, they're hiding. They're... I accepted that I'm watching a comic book movie that was never in a comic book, and that's kind of how. And even with like the the lore of the assassins and the table and stuff like that, this is a comic book movie. This is a comic uh-huh. book movie without being a comic book movie. I was able to jump into that. I had a hard time with all this machine gun fire from train. Guys just missing their mark all the time. You know, so what's the point? Like, and, and this is this went is... around John Wick. And he was run, like glass was def- like deflecting. Like, yeah, he wasn't getting hit with a lot of these bullets. And I'm like, but, how are you all? This one doesn't make sense. Cops make, and, and they say this in the Batman movie, and it's true. You start wearing Kevlar, they start using armor piercing rounds. Right. And so we got trained assassins that do nothing but kill for a living and in their world in their reality they start wearing these suits that better protect them but that would also mean subsequently weapons like the dragon breath is going to be more predominant also in this world because of this i think in that that we probably should have had that gun earlier but that that was the gun that gun was the answer to the suits it was just only in one scene. It should have probably been. But, but it was in the scene that didn't matter because all the people in France weren't rocking the suits anyway. No, there was some. Of, wasn't there? Was some of the guys from the house? Yeah, the Mercury. That Mercury. gun was taken off of one of the Rebel alliances. You know, <laughs> it was. It was. Well, we got. It seems like no, two you know seven. So that six point eight. Six, so six, seven. Six. No. 
six and a half times two plus seven divided by three, that's 20. That gives us six, six, six for. Oh, you said 6.5. Yeah, large said six point five. You said six point five. No, I said seven. I'm, I'm doing seven. No, you said oh, seven, you seven, seven, six. I just want to say six, six, six. six. Uh, two, so six excited, you so excited, heathen. You such a heathen. You're so excited. Well, because they were killing all those people. It seemed like it seemed fitting. Yeah, I'm very excited for that number. So um, yeah, seven. So we're giving John Wick four a seven. Um, like we said, we, it was enjoyable. It was a lot of the same, but it's always good to see Keanu Reeves do his. Killing it. killing it, killing it, killing it, literally, literally killing it and killing everybody. But that's look, that's our show. So hit that notification bell, hit that subscription button. Make sure you like and comment. Tell us your thoughts on it. Hit. We also got a podcast. We talk about all the other geek stuff. We also got a playlist. Look at the toys, the toy hunting. Look at the video games. We got it all. We also on TikTok and Instagram. We'll be back same bat time, same bat channel. Peace. Also, for the record, you really should subscribe for it if you've made it to the end of the video and you're finally getting the pitch. Most people pitch at the top of the video because most people don't watch the whole video. You dropped the ball, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> when it up, blame Jack. <laughs> Peace. What's up, y'all? Welcome to Three Brothers and a Shot of Milk. We're